Okay, uh, so here we are. We've got a, another phone from Opel. They sent this one over to me, um, but this review is purely my thoughts, not what they're telling me to do. Um, but this group, this phone here is one that they've made for elders again, but for the more tech-savvy elder. So this one you can actually go online unlike the other one that I reviewed. And it's got a nice set of features written on the side of the box here. So this one works on the 4G network. It can be used as a hotspot, so you can use, you can tether that up to your laptop or something to share the internet connection. Has a touch screen. Again, got the SOS button on it. Uh, it's 2.8 inch screen, big buttons, Bluetooth, 2 megapixel camera, FM radio, flashlight, social media apps. So those social media apps are things like Facebook, and YouTube I believe, speed dial, and a charging cradle, just like the old other one over here had, and expandable memory. So we've got a nice look of the whole phone on this side of the box. But Let's get into it and find out what's actually inside the box. Hmm. Nah. Ah. Wrap it closed. There we go. All right. Let's see what we have. Quite nicely packaged. So first up, you're greeted up with the phone, which there's a good front look for it. But I'll put that aside here, and we'll show you what else is left in the box. So let's take this one out. Uh, yeah, we've got a set of headphones in there, which has a button on there, so probably to start and stop the calls, and a microphone built into it. The battery, so the battery is removable in this phone. Uh, USB charge cable, I believe. Yep. So this one is still using the micro USB standard. Be nice if they upgraded to the USB-C standard. A lot more durable connection. Uh, the charging brick, which is a five volt, one amp charger. And it's universal. So it works in all the countries for the voltages. And the charging stand. Oh yeah, so that, oh yeah, it's got the two pins here and the two pins here, so that'll just sit in here like that when it's ready to be used. Um, Alright, now let's put the battery in. Um, it took me a few seconds to realize how the case opens. So there's a little tab at the bottom corner over here. We just pull that up. And inside we see the area where we can sit the SIM card and the SD card. So it looks like it uses a nano SIM. It says it quite nicely there anyway. But for now I'm not going to put a SIM card in there. I'm just going to put the battery in and fire it up and see what happens. Yeah. See if it's got any charge in it. If it comes charged out the box, or if it needs. That should be that way. Just a very tight fit. Ooh. Probably help it not fall out all the time. Alright, let's put that back on. 
not a big fan of the way that those clips work because they don't clip very well. Very forceful clip. All right. Peel off this mask. And peel off this mask. Oh yeah, so the camera sits on the top end and I presume that would be a flash in there. Let's find out. For the first power on. While it's powering on, let's have a look at the buttons that we've got. So as it says, it's got nice big buttons for your number dialing. You hang up make the call, it's got a dedicated flashlight button inside the phone and a web browser button along with a back and a menu button and the d-pad. So here we are, I've booted it up for the first time. Um, I'll just go for a brief overview of what all the apps are that are bundled into the system. Uh, it is running Android 8.0 with a heavily themed skin on top to make it easy for elders to use. So as you can see we've got four main displays on the home screen. The first one, display number one we might call it, is for the most recent contacts or bookmarked contacts to make it easy to select which person you want to call. So you put maybe your husband or your grandson or someone in there that you're often calling a lot. That'll make it easy just to go across, tap on it, and away you go. So the home screen has the phone book, messages, call logs, and the camera app. The camera is not crash hot, it just does. Uh, over here we have the tools. Inside tools is just a uh, folder of four apps, which includes the flashlight, calculator, alarm, and calendar. So once we go back out of that one, then you'll have the gallery, which is where all the photos would be stored. Now this only has four gig of internal memory of which 1.8 gig of that is used for the iOS itself and so it's very recommended to have an SD card in here if you want to store music or videos or pictures on this phone. You got the browser, now it's just a basic Android browser but it views everything in mobile view. The file manager, that's also quite self-explanatory just to look at files that are on the SD card and such. Multimedia. Now we have an FM radio and a video player and a sound recorder in there. The FM radio does not require any headphones to be plugged in to make it work. As you can hear it's already tried to kick in there. So if we just hit options there and we can just easily search for the channels that we want to use. That'll search for every channel that's available that we can pick up. Once that's done, you'll be able to select a channel and listen to it. Next we have just other apps, which that's usually stuff that's provided by the cell phone provider if necessary. In this case, mine is completely unlocked and has nothing in there. Then you'll have your SOS. So the SOS that'll set up all the set up the SOS button on the back, which can be used for emergency calls or if you get into trouble. We have. All right, let's see what we get for our $129. So on JB Hi-Fi, this is listed as a phone for $129. First, we've got the user manual, which I believe is very good. It's got nice big pictures in there and easy to written descriptions inside it, as we can see here. So the phone itself 
has a nice big screen on the outside which just shows the reception, battery level, time, date and day. Uh, to make the screen come up easy, it's got the camera, an SOS button, volume rocker, headphone jack and micro USB port underneath this little hidden cover here. There's the charging cradle plug down the bottom which just connects to the two pins on the charging cradle. They just transfer power, there's actually no connection between the cradle and the phone itself. Okay, now in summary, what I think of this phone in particular, I do like the whole docking system on it. It's kept a lot of the features from the more basic Opel mobile phone, which is just a very basic dumb phone. But it hasn't quite gone all the way up to a full-fledged smartphone. So it's on it's breaking into the borders of a full-fledged smartphone because it has got Android, it is running a touch screen, but it does not have access to a lot of the more power user features of a fully fledged smartphone such as the Note 9 here. It, it's aiming towards a very niche market for those who actually need the SOS button and the large display, uh, large buttons here to be able to see the numbers. That could in one sense be quite difficult for some people because even though you've got the large numbers here, a lot of the things that you go into, such as the Facebook app here, it's very tiny. And I have pretty good eyes, but I, a lot of people I reckon would struggle to be able to make out the contrast and I'm not sure you can see that at all. Let's see if we can focus in on that. It's still very hard to see. So. All in all, it'll probably be more suited as a fully fledged feature phone, which you can do a bit more tinkering on. I don't think the Facebook app is very good at all. Do I recommend this? I don't see a reason why I wouldn't actually. There is a niche market out, out there which I believe would suit this phone very, very well. But those people have to sort of be quite tech savvy as well as not too tech savvy to require validate going for a full-fledged smartphone.